welcome to video three of my intro to 3D art series. Today we're going to be talking about something called topology and kind of getting into something else entirely, much bigger than that, called articulation theory. Now, this is a very nice looking model, but there's something very wrong with it. As nice as it might look, and despite the normal problems, we can't use this model. It's absolutely a mess. It's been decimated. Now, I know that's a very extreme example, but I wanted to get into why this could be a problem if you are a sculptor in things like ZBrush or Mudbox or Sculptress. Um, with the advent of being able to draw quads over your mesh with retopology tools, you can run into a lot of really bad habits and a lot of really nasty edge flow but you will retain a very nice looking model no matter what since you can add as much detail as you want to retain your model's look. Now, with that being said, let's look into something 2D. This might be familiar to you if you are a illustrator. This is a mannequin invented by a artist named Andrew Loomis. But it is very useful for us if we're doing 3D art because of this simple concept. This is what we like to refer to as the cape. It runs from the pectoralis to the deltoid, from the traps down to the um, lats, down to the sacrum area. Ours won't go down that far, maybe about right here. But this concept still is very useful to us because as the arm is raised or moved or anything, all these muscles have to flow and follow that arm. So with that being said, Instead of using retopology tools, which we will do and I will go over, let us do this the old-fashioned way, using some very clever tricks. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is create a cube. And I'll go ahead and throw on wireframe. Now go ahead and smooth this cube. And turn the divisions to two kind of resembles a sphere now. And select these faces only, should be the center faces on the bottom, and don't go past the halfway point. And go ahead and extrude this outward, and set the divisions to two, and select everything, and deselect what we just made. So now only the sphere part is selected. Go ahead and delete that part. So go ahead and select these six bottom faces. I guess that would be eight. Just eight, eight, eight bottom faces. And extrude that straight down, flatten that out, select these two, and extrude these out again. And now select this edge ring and extrude that straight up and flatten that out. This is going to be our very crude body. Why is this important? Why do we care? And this looks nothing like a body. This looks absolutely terrible. Well, <clears throat> this is going to be our scaffolding for a very good uh, topological uh, mannequin or a very underskeleton for what is going to be our character to articulate very cleanly. So were the legs, well, we're not done yet, so select the sides, move these guys up, and move these guys up. And go ahead and add in some edge loops to where the crotch is going to be. I like to choose somewhere in the middle. It doesn't really matter right now. This is, I also highly recommend if you're going to um, model, box model or whatever, make sure that you do it symmetrically. I'm just doing this for the uh, sake of time. Go ahead and move this guy down, and then straighten these out. And go ahead and add in another edge loop where you want the foot to start. Again, straighten these guys out. And now select the front faces only, and then extrude these outward. And then pull these down, and then pull these down again so they're flat. Cool. As horrible as this looks, this is a very important idea of how we want our topology to flow. And I'll explain that. Because if we start adding in edge loops, 
and move this actually so that you can see that this is going to be our shoulder area. And this is where the deltoids are gonna plug into the arm. I'll just make that move just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> because if this area, we want the edges to flow this way, like the cape I was talking about earlier. And now the arm is separated for its own edge loops. And now the torso is separated for its own edge loops and the legs and now even the foot. And the neck has its own edge loop system, which is great. The only thing we're missing are the hands and the face and the face alone is going to need its own video to explain it, probably several. The hands are probably gonna need just one video, but they're gonna need their own attention. Right now we're just focusing on the body. So this looks horrible. It's not a body, but I assure you, um, we once we have this scaffolding, you move all the points in place. Obviously don't add um, edge loops so much so quickly. Um, add minimal edge loops uh, and then move them into place and then add more as you need them. And also another very important thing to notice is this area here. Why is that important? Well, it is the armpit. It has its own edge loop system as well and this is really important because this gives us the necessary space for our arm to go up and down on this side. So with a little bit of finessing, and moving around, you can actually get a body. And I've changed nothing topologically. Um, as you can see, the edge, the edge loops still run all the exact same areas. The armpit system, the arm itself, then the neck, and the legs, and the foot. And um, as a word, <clears throat> as a note, um, make sure when you do your foot, Keep these edges absolutely straight, even the ones down here. Keep them as straight as possible because when the uh, toe has to bend, you don't want these edges collapsing in on themselves. And that's what will happen if you don't run these edges perfectly straight until you get to the toes, obviously. So this is all you need to make this body um, articulate, really, because it could bend it can bend forward, back, it can even twist. And uh, we will talk, we will uh, discuss uh, fancier things for the knees and the elbows in the next video. I'll go specifically into what we call patches. Um, we use them for specific parts of the body. You can even use uh, sp specific patches for the, um, for the rump if, you, if your character has to have something, um, <clears throat> a big rump. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, this will get you going right off the bat. And I'll prove that to you by showing you uh, that I put some joints in here already. And the arm can move freely. It can even go down and then forward. Because all of these edges flow exactly how the body would naturally curtain itself. And uh, the way that it goes up and down, it still retains the right amount of shape. Now, obviously, this is a very, very um, crude mannequin. So it has absolutely no detail, but it already deforms extremely properly. So by using this, you can pretty much get and guarantee that your character will deform properly without doing too much. And um, by knowing how to model this the actual old-fashioned way, you can keep these in mind when you're actually running um, your, your retopology by making sure that here there needs to be an edge flow change and here there needs to be an edge flow change to ensure the armpit and obviously here. We'll talk about these points specifically um, in another video. These are called valences. Um, there are three point valences, five point valences, and six point valences, which is something you're not supposed to do. We'll talk about that. Most valences obviously are not valences, they're just four point edges, you know, for polygon. 
but these are special cases because they have more than four connecting to it. So with that said, um, this should get you going. This should be the bare minimum you need to actually have a character be um, a character body be be able to articulate properly. Uh, this can actually walk. It can um, it can run. It can do everything it needs to do with a very basic rig. So I hope that helps uh, clear some things up. Um, the next video we're going to be talking specifically about what to do for the knees, what to do for the elbows, and some options because there is no right way to do any of these patches. There's just a lot of options that you can choose from that will um, change the way some of these loops will run, but it's easier to change that after you have this basic scaffolding done. And uh, that's about it. I hope that helps. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave it down below or message me on Twitter. Uh, good luck.